In the comments section of the driverless LED video, two interesting questions were asked. One of them was about the insulation value of this tiny shim of fiberglass in this circuit board between the sort of mains voltage circuitry and the aluminium backplate. Uh, the other one was what would happen if a capacitor was added to the LED just after the rectifier uh, to smooth the voltage and ultimately that's going to increase the voltage quite dramatically from an RMS value of about 240 volts to about 330 volts so it may make these chips fail. There's only one way to find out and that's to do it. It's probably not a good idea but we'll see what happens. Uh, at the same time, actually, you know what, I'm just going to get my thermal imaging camera powered up here, ready for this experiment. So, um, the first thing I'm going to do, though, is test the insulation in this. And to do that, I've soldered across two of the main con tracks that cover a large area in the circuit board, to, and I've soldered wire on, and I've also uh, put a bolt through from the aluminium side with a serrated washer to bite into it, so I'm getting a good connection to aluminium. So let's uh, test this initially at 500 volts. So I'll power this on. It goes into its 500 volt test mode, so let's uh, get this visible and press test. It says it's absolutely fine. There's no saying how this would be over a long period of time, but let's bump the voltage up to 1000 volts now. So this is a 1000 volt test. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, so it does seem to be, let's do another test. It does seem to be holding up to a thousand volts. Okay, that's that test complete. The next test is the one where I power this up. So I've got the hoppy power meter in. This hopefully won't flicker now. Well, it may just go bang and make one big flicker. Uh, here's the power meter which will be shimmery and flickery, but I'll read the display for you. And the only way to test this now is to power it up, so let's see what happens. So it's lit, there's no flicker, that's interesting. Uh, this is just going to be swamping the car, I'm sorry about that. It says the power is now up to 45 watts, and that means those little chips are having a very rough time at the moment. They're dropping down quickly, it's going down, it's down to 40 watts now, 39. 38, 37, those little chips are really taking a real punishing. So let's get the thermal imaging camera. The thermal imaging camera says that those chips are, well, the surface temperature, hold on, let's see if I can, I can show you this. I might not be able to because it's so swamped out with light at the moment. Uh, let's uh, see if we can get this. So uh, the temperature of the chips is about 85 degrees Celsius. Let's look at the other chip. Yeah, it's about 80. So yeah, those chips are really having a tough time and they're cutting the current down. It's down to 28 watts now, which keep in mind this is supposed to be rated uh, round about 20 watts, so they've put out a lot of extra duty. The power factor has just gone, it's bombed. It's gone down from about 0.9 to 0.58. Um, the current is uh, almost doubled. It's up to about 200 milliamps. I think it was about 100 milliamps before. Um, and that a lot of that is just being dissipated as pure heat into the casing. Uh, there is no flicker. That's I will say that there is no flicker now. But how long this is going to last, I don't know. Because those chips are sinking a lot of heat. Let's turn this over and bring normality back to the situation. Let's bring this up and uh, have a look at it. So uh, let's... Um See if we can get this up here and focus on it. Yeah, it's still over 20 watts. You know, it's 25 watts. It's increased the rating of that fixture, but that's not necessarily a good thing, particularly with those little chips. I'm just letting it cook for a while and just see what happens. Um, it's getting quite hot. I'd expect to get hot. So uh, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it cooking uh, and then I'll come back in a moment. And the test is complete. Uh, I've taken that capacitor out. The flicker is back as a result. Some of you are asking how visible is the flicker. To the naked eye, uh, it's not that bad. But out peripheral vision, you can notice it. And if you, you know that thing when, if you've got a flickery LED lamp, 
when you move something, you, your eyes glance across the room, you get that sort of strobing effect. That's the effect it creates. So hopefully this isn't the future of these LED lights. Hopefully they're going to find a sort of, well, maybe just stick to the traditional um, drivers, even though this is ultimately, if this works, this is about the simplest thing you could possibly do. So the end results were very interesting because the power dissipation of this fitting as it is, is about 21 watts. It actually came down to about the same power dissipation, which uh, ultimately means that the power dissipation is, is decided by these little chips here, uh, just rocking on their temperature sensing and just adjusting the current to keep themselves at a constant temperature. And that's echoed by the fact that when I'm looking at, at these through the thermal imaging camera, the temperature uh, when they were being run DC was only about two degrees Celsius higher, which uh, means that once they reach that sort of um, temperature point, the current drops off quite uh, rapidly and then they just balance themselves off. So though uh, it was effectively showing about 150 milliamps in the end, that's just down to the power factor. The power was roughly the same, but there was actually the dissipation was shifted from the LEDs, which were running at slightly lower power. It was shifted out to these chips, which effectively had more voltage across them and were just basically dissipating probably about, I would guesstimate, about five watts of power each, um, although there's just two in that particular unit. Um, the electrolytic when I removed it was notably hot, but then that's not really much of a surprise. It was soldered onto a circuit board which is designed to run very hot. And as such, uh, if you're going to do something like this, I'm not sure if it's a really great thing to do, but you could uh, mount the electrolytic off board. You could mount it well away from the circuit board, either by jumping some leads from that or using a bridge rectifier. I could show you what I mean by uh, looking at the schematic here. So here's the original schematic, and there is where I added the electrolytic across. I used a 10 microfarad, 450, 400 volt uh, electrolytic, and just tacked it across the existing bridge rectifier. If you wanted to mount, say, mount the components well away and actually mount them well, as, way, as far away as you could get and put them down here, then you could use a separate bridge rectifier um, with just rough it up straight onto the capacitor and sleeve it. And then basically the mains would come in, go through the rectifier and get changed to DC and smoothed. And then you could take that onto the circuit board because it doesn't matter if you feed this board with AC or DC because it goes straight through a bridge rectifier anyway. Um, what else is there to really say about this? Yes, there is something interesting to say about it. Because it uses all these LEDs in the series, these do open up the potential that if you wanted a sort of nice, long-lasting light source, a nice simple one, uh, that you didn't mind running at much lower power, you could theoretically just stick a capacitor in series with this because it's already got the rectifier, it's already got the sort of active current limiting uh, chips that would not really limit the current that much, to be honest, because they'd only really kick in when it, it you know, uh, went above a certain level. But uh, they would certainly potentially react fast enough to clip the transient possibly at power up. So the simplest approach you, you could use with this is just to get a, a, a Class X2 special capacitor, say around about 470 nano, 680 nano. You could put it in series and just turn it into a low power LED light uh, and it should last for ages with that. Um, other than that... Uh, it was an, it's an interesting experiment to do. It did kind of work. It certainly got rid of the flicker. I don't know if it's a, an efficient way to do things. Certainly the power factor bond, but then again, we don't have to really worry too much about the power factor. It did change the efficiency of the light. It ultimately ran at the same power, but put out less light because of that, uh, the dissipation being shifted out to the chips, dissipating more heat as opposed to the LEDs. But um, it was an interesting experiment to try. So, yep, the insulation test was good. I don't know how that would go with uh, a degradation of the um, the resin and the fiberglass over time with heat. Um, another thing, uh, the, the these high-power LEDs, I've seen some of the older ones where the sort of silicon gel with the phosphor in it is actually basically dried out. It, it's gone brittle over time and cracked, and then that can actually break the bonds in the LEDs. So that may also be an issue with that. But then that applies to almost all LEDs that are run at high power. 
So, uh, interesting stuff. Very interesting. Um, I suppose, ultimately, the way around that is to... I don't. I think it'd be quite hard to implement. I suppose to take that stress off, you could almost have a phosphor-loaded oil in there, like a silicon oil. I'm not sure if that'd work or not. Or go the uh, remote phosphor approach and ha actually have the panel physically mounted in front and uh, protecting the LEDs, but nothing actually surrounding the LEDs themselves, and that would um, provide that separation. So interesting stuff. Uh, they're interesting LEDs. I've ordered some more to experiment with, but in the meantime, uh, yeah, those experiments were well worth doing. So uh, to those who suggested doing them, thanks. It was quite interesting.